birds. All right. We're doing Matthew, the 13th chapter, and it so corresponds with our what we're doing tonight here in so many ways. <clears throat> Genesis 25 and verse 3. Abraham's wild oats. We have a lot of trouble with Abraham's wild oats today, don't we? His tares that he sowed. If only he would have followed God a little more closely. And then we can look at our life. Look at our life. The wild oats. He, he, God promised him a child and promised that child to have as many children as the stars of heaven and the sands of the sea. The boy did he doom his children did. He doomed his children with nothing but constant warfare for over 2,000, well, 4,000 years. And that will be what will happen in the end times also. Let's take a look at them now. Abraham's wild oats. The tares. Someone go, before we do that, to uh, Galatians 5 and 9 and Galatians 6 and 7. Galatians 5 and 9 and Galatians 6 and 7. <coughs> and uh, who has that? Jared, do you have that? Uh, Almost. <laughs> You're getting there? Galatians, okay. Galatians, yes. Yeah. Okay. Four. That's the I, five. Five and nine. Five and nine. Six and seven. Five and nine. Um, no. Oh. The little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. What's his? Yeah, go ahead. Now, I'm confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. One who is throwing me into confusion will pay the penalty, whoever he may be. Okay, that's that's good enough. A little, a little leaven leavens a whole lump, doesn't it? A little error really destroys. That's what Paul's talking about there. Leaven or error in these churches affected them thoroughly, and if you don't do something with it, it'll destroy the churches. They will become like Catholicism. All right, and then Galatians six and seven. <coughs> Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with the instruction. Galatians six and seven. Oh, six, six, six. Okay. Um, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. All right, and so do your children. A man reaps what he sows, and so do your children, and your grandchildren, and your great grandchildren, and your great grandchildren, and your great grandchildren, and the great grandchildren. We know that. Now Abraham is the father of faithful. The eleventh chapter of the book of Hebrews talks about Abraham. Does. And he was the father of faithful. And in so many ways, he he was faithful. We are we are grafted into the Abrahamic covenant. Aren't we? We're grafted into the Abraham coming because of his faith. But look, even though he was a man of faith, sometimes he flopped. All right, and this is the flop right here. Because it said 25 and verse 3. Why? Yah, Gash, Shah. Yelah. Yep. Shiva. Yep. Divan. Mubane, Divan, Haya, Ashurim, You left Hushim, and You leave Amakmin. Now we talked about the different children and what their names meant and where they went, and we find out that, that Abraham's children by Keturah. She was a, a, a she was a Gentile. She was a Japhethite. All right. She um, these children would populate the area all around Israel, and these would be Israel's nemesis for hundreds of years. What would have happened if he didn't have these children? History would have been totally different, wouldn't it? 
<laughs> like, the, like the millennium coming in real soon, wouldn't it? If this hadn't happened. All right. <clears throat> and Jokshan. Jokshan. Jokshan, uh, the name means uh, it is a fowler. What is a fowler? A fowler. Someone that traps birds. This man uh, uh, trapped birds. And that one's on page 430 there, Cindy. Can you, can you see that? 430. 430. To trap, to, to uh, entrap, to ensnare birds. To entrap and ensnare birds. It's right up above Jock Tan. All right? <coughs> to entrap and to snare birds. Did you find it? It's right up above his nose. Maybe below his nose. <laughs> anyway, it means the trap or ensnare. That's what Joktan means, okay? And then uh, Joktan, and he begat, he birthed, all right, Et Shiva. Shiva. All right? These, these Shiva, her, this group is the, are the marauders north of Arabia. These are the people that became marauders north of Arabia. These were the, uh, what we call the uh, Arabian Knights, so to speak. Those people that ran around out there, the, the tribes, okay? And uh, Shiva means oath. Shiva means oath. And then uh, we have the Dedan. Dedan. I can't find anything for Dedan at all. It was on page 187, but we couldn't find out what it really uh, meant except for low. Low. Maybe low. Okay. And they became Asherites, the Assyrians, basically. All right. And those are the mighty ones. The mighty ones. Mighty ones. <clears throat> These are all Abraham's family now. Now he's going to have children like uh, the sands of the sea. Now what do the sands of the sea typify? The earthly, physical sea. What were the stars of heaven? That's you and me. All right, that's you and me. The stars of heaven. That's us. <clears throat> the spiritual seed of Abraham. All right. Uh Asher means what? Remember, we 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 had a child. Uh, 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 we're going to have a child by the name of Asher later. And what does Asher mean? Remember what Asher means? Happy. All right, happy. But these are these are uh, mighty ones. And the uh, Letishites, the Tushim, Letushim. All right, these Letushim. And that word means to hammer. <clears throat> means the hammer. Now, what do you do? Uh, <coughs> Doris, you ever, you lived over there before I lived. Mm -hmm. and do you remember Ragsdale's Writing Academy over there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, do you remember early in the morning when old uh, Cy Phillips would come over there and he'd start beating on that anvil in the morning? Early he'd fire up the forge and he'd start hammering on it and beating on it. That's what it means is to beat. Now this 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 word means to uh, to sharpen. Uh, it means to strike. It means like a well, like a blacksmith. Okay. Uh, Israel <coughs> hired the Assyrians and different people, uh, the Philistines, to make swords for them and to sharpen their pruning hooks, so to speak, and their plowshares, because there wasn't a blacksmith among the Israelites. They say it one time. All right. It also means to oppress and to strike, because that's what a hammer does. A hammer strikes. Okay. We are you, Li Umim. And I couldn't find a meaning for that one at all. <coughs> it's on 522 of that book, but I couldn't find out. It just doesn't say anything about it. Right. <coughs> Let's go a little further now. <coughs> Yuvanay, Midyan, 
that's the reason why I put it up there like that is because I missed it. I had to go back. I make mistakes. Okay. I, when I was copying it, I, I have made every copyist error they could, could ever make in the Bible. I understand all about it because I have copied all the New Testament by hand from Greek and I've done a lot of the Old Testament. And uh, the copyist made errors and I have made a lot of them. So sometimes we'll skip over a couple of words and that's what I did here. Okay? And uh, ephah we if air, wa kanok, wa abida, we eldra, kal, ila, dene, ketura. All right. Now and we have uh, and sons. And sons. Now, in the Septuagint, it uses the word huios. What's wrong with that? You Greek scholars, what? Errors. It should have been, the, the, the Septuagint should have not been translated wheels. These are not heirs of Abraham. They are technos. They are born sons, live birth, but they are not heirs. We all know that they're not heirs. Now, <coughs> And the Greek word, the Greek word for this, should have been techno, not wheels. Wheels is a firstborn and an heir, and they were not heirs. The the concubines were wives; they were legitimate wives of the different patriarchs. Okay, but the difference between uh, usually a concubine and a wife was what the children did not receive any heir or any anything from the father. And we're going to find that out from Abraham right here. These were not heirs. These were only live births. They were only children of him. These are the sands of the sea. These are the wild pears. These are the wild oats. <coughs> of Midian. And then ephah. Ephah means, uh, and by the way, it's Yephar in uh, in Greek. It means obscurity. That name means obscurity. If I'm skipping over some of these, we don't really have a meaning for some of them, okay? And then we have ephir. And ephir means a young calf or a deer. A young calf or a deer. And now we have, uh, and then we we Shanok, or Wa Shanok, and uh, Hanok. This, the word Hannah. You have a little girl named Hannah, don't you? What does Hannah mean? Gift or gracious? A gift or gracious? Okay. Now, Hannah has more than one root, and here the Septuagint. Use the word Enoch. Now, what does Enoch mean? And what does Enoch mean? It means teacher. Teacher. Enoch is teacher. All right. Now, uh, <coughs> many of the this is where you got you go through all these languages and look at all this and how confusing this one is. Okay. Now, most of the Scholars agree that this name means dedicated, okay? <laughs> dedicated. Which are not. The Septuagint translates it basically incorrectly as Enoch. And then it says, we Abida. All right, Abida. Now, what do you think that word might mean? Cindy, what do you think about it? Abida. What? Uh, well, Abi means what? Abba, Abba means what? Father, Father, all right, Father, Father of knowledge. That's what this one means, Father of knowledge. Now, this man could have been those people that went out there and they started some uh, culture ism, you know, 
that's what we, you know, what they call the, uh, <coughs> those illuminated ones, the Gnostics, so to speak, okay? Abida and Elda, Elda. And it is uh, Raya in, uh, in the Greek, Raya. And what it means here, this one here means whom God called. Whom God called. All right? And then call means what? Call means all. And then Ele, these, uh, Bene, uh, Keturah. And Keturah means what? What? Fragrant. Smelling good. Perfume. All right. That's what her name means. Fragrant. Smelling or, or fragrant or smelling good. Now, 25 and verse 5 is a key verse. You can put a little key out there. You can put an asterisk on it or whatever you want to because this is very, very important. Okay? <coughs> very important. Who was the heir? Isaac. Itchik. Yitchik, Isaac was the heir. No one else. Abraham all had all these kids. All right. But these were wild oats. These were not heirs. These would become the thorns by the side, by the, the thorns in the field. These would be the tares that would bother the others and choke the others out. When I, as I preached the, the 13th chapter of, uh, of Matthew this morning, I thought a lot about this, about these verses right here. Because this is this is so much like it. Let's look at it. Marilyn, are you over there? You got a Bible tonight? I have just the New Testament. You have the New Testament. The little one. Okay, the little New Testament. Okay. <clears throat> and verse 24. Now Jesus is talking to his church here and he's uh, telling them parables. Parables mean para and balo which means to throw something physical behind something, beside something spiritual so they can understand it. Okay? And he's telling his church the secrets of the kingdom. Alright, Doris 24. And this parable 54 and to them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. Okay, now 25. Is anybody over there on 25? Maryland! <clears throat> but while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and... All right, the enemy came. Mm -hmm. The enemy came. Who do you think that is? The old devil. All right. And so tares among the wheat and went away. All right, now what is a tear? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. It looks like wheat, but it is false mm -hmm. wheat. It has no fruit in it. All it is is it takes up space, breathes up good air. There are some people out in the world breathing up good air. They're not worth anything else. They're just breathing up good air, taking up space, eating good food. Wasted breath, wasted heartbeats. All right? Tears. All right. Go ahead, Marilyn. But when the wheat sprouted and the... And the no, no, go on. Uh, this is 26. Okay, so we'll go back to 25 and read that over one more time. You want me to read it again? Yeah, I want you to read it again. But while his men were sleeping, <clears throat> his enemy came and stole hair among the wheat and went away. All right. <clears throat> and 26. Cindy, are you over there? When the crop began to grow, the thistles grew too. All right, the thistles grew too. The tares grew. The weeds. This false wheat. These things just taking up space, all right? 27. Are you over there, Chris? Mm -hmm. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the wheat come from? All right, where did these tares come from? Well, the enemy sowed it. And number 28. Uh, Sharon. Uh, the enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? All right, verse 29, Roger. 
But he said, No, for while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them. You may damage the wheat with them. You may damage the, 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 the children of God. Okay? And verse number 30, Dakota. No? No. Meryl. <clears throat> Allow both to grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, first gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right. That's the uh, fall sweet. That's the tares. What's going to happen over there in the Middle East during the tribulation period? Five out of every six people are going to die. Two out of every three Jews are going to be killed to get them back in line with God. That's what it's going to take. Nothing in the in the middle, nothing between now and then is going to do it. And what caused all of this problem? Where did the wheat, where where did the tares come from? Adam. Right here. <laughs> There's a lot of, yes, and Adam too. Adam sinned. Poor old Abraham was infected by it. All right. Twenty-five and verse five. So I have a question. Yes. Who's going to start it? Who's going to start what? Or, I mean, who's not the not that they're coming in? Who's going to start? I mean, is Israel going to start it, or is? Uh, yeah. Israel was a very proud people. Right. They think you know that problem with Israel is that they think God's on their side. They name the name of God, except they won't follow God. You know what happened at Masada? It's going to happen again. They said, never another Masada. Why? Jesus looked to Israel and he said, how many times would I have called you? I called you like a mother hen, but what? You would not come. In Matthew the 13th chapter, that you would not hear. They would not hear. All these parables is church history. With Israel running parallel juxtaposition right with them all the time, rejecting God's word all the time. Every Jew in the world ought to be saved today. Look what in the world's happened to them. You just trace it, and they'll sit there, Moo, and they'll go over and rock and, and kiss them, their, the, the, the word of God and, and, and beat their head against that, that wailing wall and wail and wail and wail and wail. When they put the the building over there, I've been in that building where they put the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's got a white top and black around all around it. It says the white stood for the word of God and the truth and all that stuff. And the black is the burden that was put on Israel. You know why Israel's got the burden on them? Israel put the burden on themselves. That's why they got the burden on them. And they're going to have the burden on them until they straighten up. Simple as that. Those people haven't repented yet. <laughs> yeah, they might start a war. Who knows? With pride, thinking that God's going to be on their side in the in the six six day war and all the things over there. God has been with them, all right. It was miraculous. But I'm going to tell you something. When that last, when that. First half of the week takes place right there. I'm going to tell you what, two out of three of those Jews are going to be dead. And five out of every six human beings in the world, all the giant, five out of every six is going to, that's a lot of bloodshed and a lot of dead bodies on this earth. This earth is going to be polluted with dead humans. It's going to be polluted with dead humans. And here it all starts right back here. This is the animosity. Why are we having trouble in the Middle East today? Greed is the problem. Greed and pride. Greed and pride. We're stuck over there because of greed, money, oil. We don't even need oil, people. We shouldn't have, we should be backed off from that a long time ago. We don't need it. They were using different forms of energy over there. Man, we have the oil companies have stopped. All kinds of experiments and advances because they want to, to, to peddle their product. They want to peddle their product. And how many times in just the last few years have they broke America? 
and they're breaking America again because of greed and the want and the wrestling of power. Resting power. Right. The world is a vicious place. It's like uh, trying to jump in a tank full of great white sharks and and lean cars. <laughs> That's what it is. Why you tend? Alderahan. Et. All. I sure. Lo. Lee Yitchuk. And gave Abraham all which to him to Isaac. The heir. The heir was Isaac. The other people were imposters. They were tares. They were the wild oats of Abraham. You have to pick your children. You have to pick your mates well. Are you listening, young people? You have to pick your mates well. Because what happens for the next 50 years for them? When you pick your mate, you've got to put up with them, the mate, for a long time. <laughs> and if they have children, you got to put up with them for a long, long time. That's just the way it is. Look at all the children. Boy, what a wrestling match. Over there in the Middle East now because of what happened right here. All the wild oaks of Abraham. We live nay. Ha te log sheep. Ashars. Li Abraham. Natan. Abraham. Matanat. We. Shalahem, Mial, Yitchak, Beno, Beo, Benu, He, Gidama, El, Eretz, Gadim. And two sons. And here we have a uh, the problem again, they've got, and the Septuagint, they've got wheels. These were not the heirs, were they? These are the technos. The technois is what it should have been. Ha Pilachim, and the concubines of him, which, to Abraham, he gave Abraham gifts. Matana, gifts. He gave them gifts. And sent them away. Why shall they him? And sent them again, wait, forcefully, by the way. Look at that. See that PL Sam in there? What's PL? Third person masculine, the senior PL, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Marilyn said she didn't understand that. PL Sam, Marilyn, means something real that's vicious and harsh and hard. That's hard labor. That's when you used to get out there and shovel all that dirt when them sand blows that come there on that branch. That was PL Sam shoveling. Okay? Forcefully. You got a lot of muscles. They used to call them muscles when you were young. Muscles. And sent them forcefully away. And third person masculine is singing, and then it's got a suffix of third person masculine plural. See that? From upon. The, the, the ma'am on the front of that means that's a preposition, and it means from. And then all uh, is upon, okay? From upon. Apo and epi. Is what it would be in three. From is awful, and epi is a phone. All right. Yitchek. Get away from Yitchek. Why? He didn't want. He didn't want his son Isaac, his heir, the heir, the wheels. He didn't want him to be influenced by these ungodly buzzards, which were his children too. All right. Benal, his son. In his, while he was still alive, be, be Odenu, uh, in his uh, still being alive, all right, Epi in Greek, still being alive, eastward unto the land of east, all right, he sent him east, Anatolon is what it is in Greek, Anatolon, the land against the, the 
to the east, all right? He sent them to the east. And these are where they fit. Basically, they're still there today, aren't they? They're still out there. What are these people? Iraqis. What? The Iraqis. Yeah. All the different tribes, the wild tribes, you know those people? What were these people? Let's look at them. Let's just think about them for a minute. Let's go back in time and think about these people. Up until about 600 A.D., these people were a bunch of, of wild individual tribes, and they still are in a lot of ways. But they were absolutely heathenistic. They, they worshipped every spirit that jumped up. They were afraid to spit. When they would spit, they would apologize to some little god that they might have spit upon. They were very, very superstitious people. All right? And then, Mohammed come on the scene. I think Mohammed was one of the, one of the dirty birds, too. You know, the false prophets. Mohammed came on the scene, and whatever kind of inspiration he had from Satan, he gathered up those Arabian people and told them that there was one God. And he gathered them together like they had never been gathered together before. Right? Now, in the last days, what do we have? We have a Muslim world. No. These people that think they're going to bring in the millennium, <laughs> like the Southern Baptists did in the early 1900s, the Southern Baptists said, give us two or three million dollars and we'll bring in the millennium. We'll bring in, we will reach the world for Christ. I'm going to tell you something. The world has rejected Christ. It's nice to, to go out there and there are people like in the Solomon Islands out there. These people are so glad to hear the Word of God. And they will give their lives and they will work and they will preach in those churches. What's the difference about them? They were pagans too, weren't they? They were devil worshippers. About these Muslims. The people in the Solomon Islands heard the truth. Neil Mormon. Ronald Smith over there in Vicky. They're over there teaching them the Word of God. I, years ago, I gave Brother Morley the doctrines of the Bible, and they were using that and those lessons like that to teach their pastors over there. They would teach the pastors, and these people would pastor them down. What's the difference between them and the Muslim world? The truth never persecutes other religions, does it? We just preach the truth. The truth will take care of itself. Either the truth, people will either hear the word of God or they won't. When people come to church, they either the word of God falls off them like water on the duck's back, or else it will go into their heart and they will listen and they will believe. Or they will leave two times the son of hell that they were before. And old Brother Matt said, if you would go repent tonight and get out of here before it starts. <laughs> You'll be responsible for God for that message there. And that's the way it is. The Muslim world it was founded upon a false premise. They accepted Adam as a prophet of God. They accept Jesus, Abraham, and all that truth. They accept all of them. But it's on a false premise. Their God is a God so far out that he can't be reached with us. They have all the beautiful names of God. Now, the Muslim world, I'm going to tell you, Mohammed did a wonderful thing for a lot of those Muslim people. But he hooked them into a religion that will take them to hell forever. They had a Renaissance period, the Arabic numerals you got, mathematics and everything, a lot of that came from the Muslim world. There was a real Renaissance at that time. And if you realize what was happening in the Christian church at that time, the, the Baptists were having a rough time, and that's when Catholicism was getting its power. And Catholicism and the Muslim world were fighting, and they were wrestling. And both of them were wrestling on the same grounds with the sword. They were killing each other. <coughs> Back and forth. The Catholic Church brought the Western world into the Dark Ages. It had it brought in the Renaissance among his people. This, this is history now. This is history. You can't deny history. That's what happened. Now, we are stuck with those wild oats. 
still that Abraham so did. Those people will never be saved. Most of the Muslims will never be saved. They're stuck in a false religious system. They're stuck in it with demonic power. They will give their lives. They, I mean, they're more modest than we are. False religion will last more for their, more of their people than the truth ever does. But they veil their women. They have their scarves on their heads. They clothe themselves up. They don't run around naked. They're modest. They may have 10 or 15 wives. But <laughs> the women are models. <coughs> While he was still alive, he sent him away. Now it's 25 and verse 7. <coughs> 25 and verse 7. We elect Yemi Shani Hagi. He liked that language. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Abraham, Asher, Hey, Niat, Shana. Got anybody's name Shana? Her name means year. Year, okay. We, Shabim, Shana. We, Chamesh, Shani. And these, the days and the years of the life of the living, all right. Uh, in the Hebrew or in the Greek Septuagint is zoes. We got to work zoo, living animals in the zoo. Okay? Zoology is the study of living things. All right. The years of the life of Abraham, which he lived. All right. A hundred years and seventy years and five years. All right. A hundred and seventy-five years is what Abraham lived. That's what he lived. Long time, huh? <clears throat> My body is just about wore out. I don't know if Abraham was in bad a shape as I am right now at, at, at 175. <laughs> I don't know. I'm wore out. <clears throat> I wish I could go on and serve the Lord a few more years and be, be, be useful to Him. And I will do my best whatever time I'm here. <clears throat> 175 years. Have you ever thought what a man could do if he just tried to serve the Lord 80 years to his full extent? What could you accomplish if you redeemed the time earnestly for 80 years in your life? What if Abraham had really served the Lord all those 80 years? without falling and without burying at all. We know that God told Noah way back in the early part of the book of Genesis, he prophesied that what would happen, and even the church age, he prophesied about the church age, that that the gospel would be given to the Japhethites, which we have today, the Japhethites, the gospel is of the Japhethites, not the Jews. Okay? The Jews don't have a gospel for the, for the world today. They don't have any good thing to tell you. They have nothing good. They have no good news. They don't have it. They got all these little festivals and, and feasts and all this kind of stuff, and they can go through all their little rigmarole, but all of it is superstition. If you kept the Sabbath today, it would be blasphemy, so to speak. Why? Because Jesus is our Sabbath. We rest in Him, don't we? We rest in Jesus. We don't need to rest all the time. I mean, it's good for you to rest one day a week. It, you'll probably wear out less. less. But if you kept it religiously, it would be wrong. Because Jesus is our Sabbath. He is our Sabbath. 25 and verse 8. Why you go? Why you mocked? Abraham? Beshiva? Told. Ba, Zagin, we saw the Yah, why ye aset, El Amor. And expired. And expired. Third person masculine singular, cow, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Abraham died and stayed there. That's what it literally means. 
he died and stayed dead. Okay? And died. He breathed out his last breath and it stayed gone, and then it says, Vayamot. Vayamot. And he died. Third person, Magnus Singer, Calvo, consecutive imperfect. And everybody that's ever been born in this, in the whole history of mankind has died except for two people. Enoch and Elijah. All the rest of them died. You go back in the Old Testament and you start reading this. I got pretty fast when I was doing the last part of that. Uh, the first 41 classes there, he said, all, all it was is, why you move, why you move, why you move, why you move, why you move. <laughs> and he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. All of them died. Every one of them died. You know anybody that's 140 years old today, 175? How many around? Not very many. We all died, don't we? What's the most important thing in life? Prepare for the afterlife. There's nothing in this world that you can do. You go out and you have all kinds of fun, do all kinds of fun things in the world. And that means nothing. Just a hill of evil. You can have the greatest hobbies. I went by tonight on the way there, on the way up to the church tonight, and there's cutting horses out there. I love to see cutting horses work. I love to, I used to like to train them. I just like it. But I'm going to tell you what. There's not much spiritually eternal things going on out there. <laughs> Cutting the horse is beautiful. But what if you just put your whole life into that? It would be a waste of life, wouldn't it? It would be a waste of your time. It's not eternal. You could be in the Cutting Horse Hall of Fame and everything, and it wouldn't mean anything in eternity, would it? What did you tell Abraham You could tell Abraham about it. <laughs> tell him about riding Lucky Buck. <laughs> That one old lucky buck. One of the, one, that horse, for 15 years, I think he was in the top 10 of the world. I saddled that horse. I, I braided his mane. I brushed him and rode him. Thing. So did I. And I, I'm not sure if, if this question is even answerable, but why did the people live so long? Why did they live so long then? Yeah, and not now. I don't believe that there was the pollution back then that there is in the world today. They live simple lives. If you go back over there in these places today, you'll find a lot of them still living long lives. They still live over 100 years. In the Oriental cultures, some of those people live a long time. There was one Oriental doctor who lived 300 years, I believe. Do you know anything about that, brother? I don't know. There was one Oriental doctor who lived 300 years. There are people that have lived a long time. If you got away from... We're poisoning ourselves to death right here, I'm telling you. Come out there and stay around my place for a little while. You won't be able to, at night time, you won't be able to stick your head out the door. <laughs> Pollute you to death. They lived a long time back then. Before the flood, people lived almost a millennium. How long did Methuselah live? When he's dead, it shall come to pass. That guy's name, that was a funny name, wasn't it? How long did he live? 969 years. It's almost a millennium. Over 900 years. Some of them 800, 700, 600 years. The world was a different place. It was not polluted like it is today. We have thrashed God's earth. And we have paid the cost. We have paid the cost. <coughs> and died Abraham. In age, good. Tobah, Zigon, old. That word there, Zigon, that's geriatric. <laughs> geriatric. An old man. An elder. A good old age. And uh, this is a funny word here. It means satisfied. And satisfied. And he was gathered. He was gathered together unto his people. It says, Pros et te et te pros ton laon alton. And he was added to the people of them. Uh, <clears throat> when you die in the Lord, it is wonderful. Angels come and they take you home. And you're gathered back to your people. Other saved people. 
your family that's safe. When you die and you don't know the Lord, it's terror from that moment on. When you, you, you can have the best in this world, but when you die, when you're lost, it is screeching and scratching and the demons come to get you. And they take you into the place of the departed spirits of those that are damned. And it lasts forever, doesn't it? You don't get undamned after a thousand or two or three or four or five thousand years. I talked to a guy here a while back. He, he said, I scared the hell out of it. Preaching on hell. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. You know what's so scary about hell? It doesn't go away. Not only that, people today that die go to Sheol or Hades. And that's not the last place. That's not the end of it. When I did that funeral out there uh, Thursday, I could barely stand up on my pegs and still had the bad hip business. But I got out there and, and Emil's uh, casket was beautiful and everything else. And here I am, and I looked out there and I said, look around people. This is a necropolis. But one of these day place, one of these days this place is going to be empty. I said, when you get put in the ground in a casket, that's a hope chest for the saved people. And it's a chest of doom for the lost. You don't get to stay in the ground. If you're saved, you get to be resurrected. Your body is resurrected. But if you're lost, in the meanwhile, your spirit is in Hades being tormented. Your spirit is in Hades being tormented. And if you go to Luke, the 16th chapter, those people in Hades today are not resurrected. But they have taste, they have smell, they have sight, they have memory. And they don't want to be there, and they don't want their family to be there either. They've come, and, and, and there's no way out. There is no hope at all. And it's called sophon scotia. What sophon mean? Thick. Darkness. People say, well, I wouldn't be happy in heaven. I want to be with my friends in hell. I'm going to tell you what, you're not going to have any friends in hell. You're not going to have any company in hell. You're not going to, it's all darkness, people. You're not going to have anybody to, to, to visit with. It's going to be all darkness. All separation. Thonatos. Separation. Solitary confinement forever. You know one of the things that they did in the in, in the prisons? They, if, if you're a bad boy, they put you in solitary confinement. People go nuts in solitary confinement. How about a million years of that and then have another hundred million years on top of it of solitary confinement? That's wrong, I'm going to tell you. And we don't have to go there. There's not one person that's going to go to hell that has been damned from before his birth. I don't believe in hyper-Calvinism, by the way. <clears throat> we all have a chance to be saved. But, we go, to, we go to hell. There's not one Jew that has gone to hell since Jesus Christ died on the cross for us, uh, for them. Not one of them went to, went to hell because Jesus didn't die for them. They went to hell because they wanted to. They want to help because they kept on stopping their ears and kept on rejecting Jesus Christ. That's why. We all die. I looked out there in that graveyard and I said, this is going to be a, an empty place one of these days. There aren't going to be anybody. Right now it's a necropolis. A city of dead people. But there won't be anybody here. All of us have eternity someplace to, to look to be. Where are you going to spend eternity? Where are you going to stay? What have you done with your life? 25 and verse 9. Vayik Varu. Ota. Yichak. Vayishmael. Vano. El. Mi Ara. Ha. Muk. Pila. El. Sede. 
Ephraim, Van, Hoshtar, Hagati, Asher, Al, Bene, Mamre. This is the most. When I was in Israel, they know where the cave of Machpelah is. I have been there. Some of you I showed the pictures of the cave of Machpelah. Abraham's buried there. Sarah's buried there. Isaac's buried there. Rebecca's buried there. Jacob's buried there. Leah's buried there. I have seen that place. Those people are there. Just like the Bible says. All of these people walked there. All the sons of Israel walked there. When they buried Jacob. They brought Jacob all the way from Egypt. And buried. Third person, masculine, plural, cow, wow, consecutive, and third again. And they buried him, and he's kept buried there. Him, Isaac. Egypt. And Ishmael. What's Ishmael mean? What's Ishmael mean? Remember what that name means? Mean? Ishmael. God hears. And his son unto a cave. All right, a cave. This is a cleared field. This is a naked ground. All right. It is a strata of rocks and banks. Okay. The Machpelah. El Sedeh unto the field of Ephraim, the son of Zophar, the Hittite, which before the face of Mamre, which is before the face of Mamre. 25 and verse 10. How far do you want to go? A little bit further? All right. Ha Sedeh, Asher, Kwanah. Avraham, Miat, Vene, Chet, Shamah, Kubar, Avraham, We Sarah, Ishto. And the field, the Hasadah, the field which he had purchased, Kwanah, he had purchased, Kwanah. You know, in, a, in, a, in the Comanche, that means good smell. Quana. There was a guy by the name of Quana Parker. Cynthia Ann Parker's son. Uh, that was his baby name. And he loved that name so much, he never changed his name. All Indian boys would have a baby name, and then they would have an adult name. Quana. Quana meant sweet smelling. It was kind of like the girl. All right? Or not. And he had purchased. Third person might have seen there, Cal Perfect. Alright? And look at those page numbers down there, 888. If you look in there on page 88, you'll find that in that word, in that book. And if you look on page 4, you'll find Abraham. Also, every one of these you'll find in Brown Driver and Briggs if you look at it. And then uh, Abraham, Meoth, from the sons of Heth. Abraham bought this from the sons of the Heth. Right? And it's Chet. Right? These are the Hittites. Did you know that for many, many years the only evidence of the Hittites ever being in the world was from the Bible? And many Bible people that didn't believe the Bible, they say, look at there, the Bible saying that people existed over there that didn't exist. See there? That's why the Bible's wrong. It made up these are nothing but a bunch of stories. Now we find out, you know who the Hittites are? You know who the Hittites were? Brother Abel. The Hittites were the Asians. They are the ones that, that built the first, they were the builders of society. In China and in the, in, in the Far East over there, they built great empires in the world. The first flush toilets and hygiene and everything else was all over there in China. Remember I told you there was one Chinese doctor? that he lived over 300 years. The first, the toilets, while up Europe was stinking the high heaven with the streets of sewers, China and the Far East had piped plumbing, 
and they had septic systems, they had pipe, they, had, they used bamboo, and they ran gas in there. These were the Hittites. In the Bible, it talks about these Hittites being uh, the uh, blacksmiths and the builders. We find, how many, how many of you ever had, had a cast iron stove? You had a cast iron stove. I got one. Yeah. Did you ever have one, Doris? Mm-hmm. Did you guys ever? Did you ever have a wood stove at all? No. Uh, yes, we had a cabin. Okay, a with a wood stove. In. All right. The very first wood stove that was coal fired or gas fired that was ever built was invented by the Hittites. And these people, according to these people that believe the Bible, they didn't exist. They built stoves. They, the first people to print money. The first people to print anything. Gutenberg's press was a, it was much later, but the Orientals had the printing press in all of them before that. They printed money. They had doctors. They used medicine. They had real pharmaceuticals and not so much just snake doctors. <laughs> Doris, you remember what a snake doctor is? No. They use that term. Graham used to use that term snake doctor all the time. By the way, if you people don't know what a snake doctor is, that's a dragonfly. <laughs> Them red dragonflies, all right? That's a snake doctor. Voodoo medicine. They had real pharmaceutical medicine over there. All of the all of the Hamites were the greatest doctors in the world. Well these were the these Hittites were the greatest of all of them. Okay. There buried was he was buried, Abraham and Sarah, his wife. Sarah, his wife. What does Sarah mean? She wants to fight. She wants to fight. That means contentious, a fighter. The word prince comes from that because a prince is a fighter, a warrior. Alright? A warrior. Wahi. Ashare. Miot. Abraham, Y. Barek, Elohim, F. Yichek, Beno, Y. Yishev, Yichek, M. Bier, La Hay, Roy. It's on the double Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, Las Vegas is, tries to look like the Middle East and the Far East and Egypt and everything else all in one, doesn't it? The Taj Mahal and everything, all to do what? To suck you in. <laughs> the little, little den. <clears throat> Those gambling casinos aren't over there to give money, but so many people think they can go over there and make money. <laughs> that wasn't founded on giving money away, I can guarantee you. Why he? And became after death of Abraham, he had blessed God, all right, Isaac. God blessed Isaac. Elohim. Elohim. What does the word Elohim mean? That's that's a that's a big term for God, isn't it? Elohim. Elohim. The em on the end of it means what? Glory. Now, if you ask the Muslims why the word Elohim, now it means three or more. There's singular, there's dual and plural in Greek and Hebrew both. Singular, dual, and plural. This is a plural name which means three or more, okay? Now we believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but we don't believe in three gods. Now the Catholic Church believes in four gods, okay? They believe in four gods. They believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Mary. Alright? Now he's a God also. Alright? But we believe in a triune God. What's the difference between triune and three gods? Huh? Three separate gods and three in one. We believe in a triune God, not in three gods. Not in three gods. We believe in a triune God. This word Elohim, the Muslims will say, well, that word means uh, a whole lot, God. They won't say, and, and, and I'll, I've asked them, and I said, well, why is it in plural? Well, it doesn't mean three. It means mighty, exalted, mighty. All right? It's talking about the triune God. That's what it's talking about. That's why it's used in, in the triune way. 
at Jesus' baptism, what we have, we have a triune God there. We're not going to see three separate gods in eternity. It's one God manifested to us in three ways. The only God we're ever going to see is Jesus. That's the physical expression of God. Et, Isaac. Et is the what? The sign of the direct object. What's the equivalent in Greek? Ace. All right. Isaac, his son. And what does son mean? Bene. Let's just go back and remember what all these terms mean. What son mean? According to a pattern. According to a pattern. And he kept on dwelling. Isaac had there the half roy. Right? <coughs> the air means what? A flowing spring. All right. And uh, lahai. It means moist. It means freshness. It means. Uh, uh, a jawbone, a cheek. You know, your cheek inside is wet, isn't it? it should be. If it's not, you're dead. <laughs> or you've been snoring all night. <laughs> what the other? And then uh, the word Roy means what? Roy. Huh? Shepherd. All right? It means to watch or to see. All right? Watch or to see. Well, let's quit there. And we'll start at 25 and verse 12 next week. Three, eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. Well, we made ten verses tonight, didn't we? <coughs> what do ten verses? Is the Word of God in, in Hebrew and Greek is a little more opening up to you, a little bit more, you can see things that you did not see in the, uh, just the English translation. Well, go out and do something eternal. But no, did you have a question? No. Oh, no. All right. Cindy. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid. Yeah, I'd like for you to, to, to lead us in prayer as we go out and, and seek the world. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come together again and to listen to your word. It opens our eyes so much to the understanding of just exactly what the words mean and has so much more to it. And I just pray that you would allow us to share that with other people and, and help to open their eyes to what we are understanding of the Bible is. Be with us this week. Keep us safe. And bring us back next week. Bless all of us. Remember the lesson we had tonight was sowing and reaping. Don't go out and sow wild oats and pray for a cough trailer as they come up. <laughs> you don't sow wild oats and pray for a cough trailer. They do come up. They come back to haunt you. And that's what's going on in the world today. All right. God bless you. Thank you for your attention. Now, Thank you for being here, Doris.